Welcome back to Yahoo Finance Live. Uh, uh, chairs of Tesla down about 2% right now with about 30 minutes left in the trading week after Elon Musk tapped Linda Yaccarino to run Twitter. For more, we're joined by Ross Gerber, Kawasaki Wealth and Management Wealth and Investment Management CEO. You got a long title, Ross, but uh, we like to talk to you because know, you've got I'm investments sorry. on both. <laughs> you've got investments on both sides of things. You've kind of become the public face of investor frustration for Tesla, but you're also invested <laughs> in Twitter. What do you make of the right. announcement here? Oh, I couldn't have been more happy. I mean, this is what I've been pushing for for months. Um, find a great CEO for Twitter that will complement Elon's technology skills with somebody with a media background. I've always felt Twitter was a media and entertainment company before it was a technology uh, challenge. And, and that was something Elon and I differed on. And it looks like he finally came around and found just an A plus CEO to run the media side of Twitter. So that's exciting as a Twitter shareholder. And it's even more exciting as a Tesla shareholder because it'll free up Elon, I think, to spend a little bit more time on Tesla and focus, but also having him not have to deal with some of the more difficult and controversial issues that come in with the politics of running Twitter. So that creates another face to deal with some of the incredibly challenging issues of running a media company. Ross, so is the Twitter overhang, though, really gone? Because at the end of the day, he's still executive chair. He's still C CTO. And we know that he likes to have control over what he is invested in. Yeah, I think it's it's gone in the sense of we now have a clear vision of what management will look like at Twitter and his role will decrease in uh, the amount of time and energy it will take as time goes on and the product stabilizes and the technology and the team gets better. But I think it's really about being the face of Twitter that puts Tesla shareholders at risk because of all the political challenges of running such a difficult company. And so by having somebody else being the CEO, it really deflects, I think, a lot of the negative, hopefully deflects the negative criticism that Elon's got, which has definitely hurt the perception of Tesla in the consumer marketplace, especially in very, very important markets on the West Coast. So, so this is a win across the board because she's such a great like, person for this role. A number of other headlines driving uh, Tesla shares today, one being the recall that's right. happening over in China. Um, put this in context for us, how you concerned know, this, You know, it's like this recall, you know, this recall thing is like talking about horseshoes and horses. You know, it's like you don't recall cars anymore the same way we perceive a recall that we're going to have to drive our car back and get some physical park fix. That's not what this is about. These are software updates and the terminology needs to change from calling these things recalls versus software updates that take 30 minutes uh, for your car to update while sitting at home. So I think these things get blown out of proportion in the media and, and I really don't understand why when it's like literally the owners of these vehicles don't have to do anything. So there's no cost to Tesla. So, you know, it's a lot of news headlines, lots of clicks, but in the end, um, Tesla just updates their cars and they work great. Ross, what do you think about the pricing strategy? Because that obviously has been a huge focal point here among shareholders, yeah. among investors over the last several weeks. And we've seen Musk reverse course a couple of times. How much of it do you think, I guess, how big of a boost do you think the price cuts have done with demand? And as a result, how worried are you about some of the pressure that we have been seeing on price margins? Right. So this has been the area that I've been really concerned about because I, I view Tesla as a premium brand and I think it should maintain its margin at minimum of 20 percent on vehicles. And we saw that uh, decline in Q1 to sell these vehicles at lower prices. And, and that's really what hurt the stock and concerned investors is, you know, obviously demand for Tesla. Teslas are not meeting supply. And so they lower the prices aggressively to create an equilibrium with supply and demand. But but unfortunately, that's not the best way to sell cars or premium products by having a, like a dynamic pricing model like hotels. And so I think it's very confusing for consumers. And I think consumers who bought vehicles in Q4 felt burned because they paid, you know, let's say $65,000 for a car that they could now buy for $46,000. And that really doesn't leave customers happy who bought cars in the quarter before. And so this strategy to me has been really 
you know, haphazard and disjointed and it's caused a lot of confusion. Now they're raising prices because demand is picked up. You know, I, I think Tesla needs to decide this is how much our cars cost minimum. And if, if commodities costs decrease enough to lower prices and maintain margins, that's great. But Tesla needs to use tools to create new demand from the 90% of American consumers that drive gas cars and really don't fully understand the value proposition of an EV. And there's tremendous amounts of pent up demand if if the public's educated. And that's where Tesla needs to go now that it's a mature company selling 2 million cars a year. We will see if it does go there. Well, Ross Gerber, always great to have you. Yeah. Gerber Kawasaki, Wealth and Investment Management CEO. Thanks so much. Thanks for having me.